Hey guys, Josh Balog here. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Happy Monday. Today we are going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 1, all the way through chapter 11, verse 18, which is going to uh, chronicle the story of Cornelius, the centurion soldier, Peter, um, and the gospel being for all nations, not just for the Jewish people. So we begin to see here the beginning of the spread of the gospel to all nations. But it took some really uh, intent listening and some courageous obedience in order to get to that point. So let me pray for us real quick, and then we're going to dive in. I'm not going to read each of these verses here because it's a long passage, but I do encourage you to go back and look at it. I just want to make a few observations and then give us two activations um, as simply as I can this morning. So, Father, thank you for today. Thank you that you are a God who speaks to us. Um, God, would we listen, not just hear that you're speaking, but would we listen and would we obey? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So here in Acts, uh, to summarize the story of what we're going to see in these two chapters here, uh, Cornelius, who is a Roman centurion soldier, a man of great authority uh, and influence, and it, the Bible says good reputation among the Jewish people, feared God and served the Jewish nation uh, doing good deeds. And then God spoke to him. Um, which is pretty incredible. Uh, it doesn't give us any indication anywhere else that God, uh, outside of the prophets in the Old Testament, spoke to people directly. But in this story, uh, God sends an angel of the Lord to speak directly to Cornelius. And putting myself in Cornelius' shoes, I may have been a little bit freaked out. But to his credit, he heard what was said, and that was that he needed to send for the Apostle Peter to come and visit him. And uh, so he heard that the Lord was talking, he listened. And the difference between hearing and listening, of course, uh, hearing is passively knowing that God is speaking or knowing that someone is speaking. And listening is just kind of on that edge of the seat, uh, anticipating what's going to be said and ready to obey. Cornelius obeys. And he sends three of his guys, uh, a soldier and two of his servants, to go and get Peter. Um, and then Peter uh, sees a vision uh, up to this point. Uh, the message of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, had really only been for the Jew had only been for the Jewish nation, and so Peter saw this vision and he saw it three times, and it was uh, can only be typified as something a little bit out of the ordinary uh, and unusual. And Peter could have chosen just to uh, brush that aside and think it not a big deal, but three times the Lord spoke to him and showed him this vision and said, "You know what I have here? I do want to read this one verse for you." He says. Um, What God has made clean, you must not call common. And so the Lord was indicating that the gospel was to be not just for the Jewish nation, but also for the Gentiles here. And so Peter, to his credit, heard these things. And um, then the Spirit once again talked to him for a third time. He kind of translated that for him and said, there's going to be three guys that are coming to see you. Without hesitation, go with them. And so Peter does so, and he meets up with Cornelius. And from there, he's able to see that through the vision and through God speaking to him that this message is not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. So he meets Cornelius, and then he says, in truth, and this is in verse 34 of chapter 10, he says, Then Peter began to speak, In truth, I understand that God doesn't show favoritism, but in every nation, the people who fears him and does righteousness is acceptable to him. The good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. So he uh, he had no precedent for this, right? All he knew up to this point was that the gospel was for the Jews, but he hears something that's abnormal or unusual, but he trusts the Lord, and he listens, and he obeys. And so then he knows that he's supposed to go and be an advocate for the Gentiles to the other uh, Jewish leaders uh, of the church at that time, and so he goes goes, and he does that. He tells them about this vision that he had three times, and uh, and then they are like, as as he's, as Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit, this is verse 44, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. And then later on, as Peter is describing all of this, uh, to his Jewish brothers, they uh, they were silent, and they glorified God, saying, "So God has granted repentance, resulting in life 
to the Gentiles as well. Pretty amazing story. Just want to make a couple observations for you and then a couple activations, some things that we uh, can put into application for ourselves. Number one, God speaks to those he wants to partner with. And guess what? That's all of us. If you're a child of God, he wants to partner with you. Uh, God is not just speaking to those that are the quote unquote super Christians, um, the ones that have been in the faith for a long time, or even those that are on a paid pastoral staff at a church. He is speaking and he wants to speak to you. Uh, and he is speaking. And so really it's just a matter of uh, slowing down and listening. So he wants to, he speaks to those he wants to partner with and that's everybody. God, second observation is God wants to partner with you uh, with any who will listen and obey. Okay, that's kind of implicit in the first point. And then third, anytime God calls to action, he's already at work. We see that very much in this story here where God communicates to Cornelius um, and then he communicates to Peter. But of course, Peter doesn't know anything about Cornelius yet. He'd already set that plan in motion, the centurion. He'd already spoken to Cornelius. And so God is already at work when he asks us to partner with him. And it's a matter of us trusting, even if we can't see the results or the outcome or where it's headed, it's trusting God that he's already at work. And that's a very comforting thought to me because uh, the results don't lie with me because God's the one that's in control. He's the one that's going to do it. Uh, and then lastly, the gospels for all nations, which could be overwhelming, right? Sometimes I'm overwhelmed by that. The gospels for all nations. Well, how do I get that message out to so many people? But I would add a caveat to that. Yes, it's all for all nations, but you can start in your backyard. So wherever you are, uh, in your neighborhood, in your workplace, the gym that you work out at, this is very much the, the idea of being missional. You take the gospel wherever you are. And so instead of thinking so broadly and maybe getting overwhelmed by the all nations idea, start right where you are, in your backyard, your front yard, with your neighbors. Um, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but I'll do it again real quickly. I think one of the best ways we do that with people is we take the attitude. Uh, we've talked about the language of heaven being blessing. So take this, this acrostic and put it to use. And that's the idea of bless. Begin with prayer. Ask God who it is uh, that he wants you to minister to or where he wants you to go. Uh, listen for who that may be or listen to the person uh, as you meet them. Eat with them. Again, you're listening as you're eating with them. You're hearing the things that are important to them. And then the S of bless is to serve. Serve those needs that you hear whatever they may be, uh, usually they're very practical and simple needs. Think no, no need is too small, um, but meet those. And then after you serve, you usually, almost always, you're gonna have an opportunity uh, to share. And that would be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and why you would even um, be interested in blessing other people. So start with that, start with your neighbors, start with the idea of blessing them. Um, and so that could be kind of like a bonus activation, if you will. But really the, the uh, biggest activations that I can see in this story. Oh, I did want to tell you a couple of the observations I thought were kind of cool. Um, the number three I see is pretty prevalent in this passage, and I'm sure there might be other application as well, but uh, Peter sees the vision three times. Uh, the voice of the Lord speaks to him three times. Uh, Cornelius sends three guys uh, to go and to get Peter. And so uh, one of the rules or one of the, the ways that we we know that God is serious about something in scripture is when he repeats himself. So he repeats himself several times here. And I think that's even maybe just a God wink, uh, a confirmation for Peter that he, what he was hearing was correct. That there was three men, he heard it three times. Um, three is a very biblical number. The Trinity is, is three. <clears throat> so just thought that was kind of cool observation. Uh, but as for activations for us, listen and obey. Right, We see that all throughout this story here. Listen and obey. And listening, i got to be honest, sometimes it's difficult for me. It may be for you as well. Oftentimes I fall into the, the camp of the passive hearing. Uh, I'll hear that someone is talking, whether it be my kid or my wife or something going on around me, but I'm concentrating on something else, whether it be reading a book or watching TV or on my phone or talking to somebody else. You can hear that they're talking, but you're not really listening to what they're saying. So passively hearing that someone is talking is different than listening. Listening is active and it's purposeful and it's intentional. You're listening uh, and you're looking to the second part activation would be obey. Uh, and that takes courage sometimes because God may take us uh, to a neighbor that we don't, um, of course, we're already not going to know him if we haven't met him yet, but they might also be strange or they might be of a different religion or they might have a different background or they might have a different um, upbringing. Um, 
but the Bible is full of stories, you know, when even Jesus is approach and Paul's approach when it goes to church planting and looking to spread the gospel later in Acts, it's going to be a couple of things, but two that I definitely see is that you're looking for a person of peace and that's somebody that's receptive to the gospel message. Um, and then secondly, you're looking for a person of reputation and that can be good or bad. You see that all throughout the gospels and Acts as well, that God chooses those that have reputation. Here, Cornelius had a good reputation among the Jews uh, but if you think back even to Saul before he came Paul, he had a reputation, but it was a reputation for killing Christians. Uh, but it was God who wanted to miraculously transform his heart and get him on the winning team and the one that was going to spread the gospel. You even think about Peter. Um, when he was called Simon, he was influential with, with uh, tax collectors. You think about, uh, not tax collectors, fishermen, but you think about Matthew, he was a tax collector. He had a reputation, wasn't great among uh, the Jewish people maybe among um, the Romans, but it's people that it's undeniable that God has come into their story and he's transformed him. And so you're looking for a person of peace, you're looking for a person of reputation, whether that be good or bad. And of course, as you're listening and God is pointing these people out to you, you're just ministering to them. So those would be uh, the observations and the activations for us today. This is a pretty uh, large chunk of scripture, but again, I encourage you to go back and to read it. And one of the cool things that I did that I'm not gonna have time for right now is just to read it through the perspective, maybe read it a couple of times. Read it through the perspective of Peter and what he may have been thinking through all of this because this was new. Read it from the perspective of Cornelius and what he may have been feeling and thinking and experiencing. And then of course, read it from the perspective of the other Jewish leaders uh, who are really called to be courageous in trusting Peter and his testimony. Uh, and that God was wanting to spread the gospel to all nations. But biggest takeaway really is that God, um, God is speaking. He wants us to listen, he wants us to obey, and he wants to partner with us. And so I find that an amazing thought that he wants to use me, that he wants to partner with me uh, to see his kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. And so let's take that into our individual lives, but let's take that into our missional communities. And again, mission, mission, mission. If you don't have a mission, or a people group that you guys are gonna be ministering to, be praying about that uh, individually and as a, as a missional community because that's really what is going to uh, deepen our fellowship, deepen our community, but also is gonna take the gospel to those who haven't heard it and who need it desperately. So, God is speaking and he's calling us to listen and he's calling us to obey. And we can do those things individually, but even more so and better, let's do those in our, in our missional communities. Let's listen to God together and let's obey him together as we want to see the gospel spread all throughout Valrico and Brandon and the greater parts of Florida, the nation and the world. Um, let's do that together. You guys are loved. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and we will be seeing you soon.